G'day guys, I'm Bushkin. Thank you very much, PUBG Mobile, for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. We're in PUBG Mobile's 13 days of Halloween. Uh, there's tons of big giveaways happening right now and continuing all the way through to October the 29th at 5 p.m. PT on the official PUBG Mobile YouTube channel. If you want to get involved, head over to the 13 Days of Halloween event website. That's amg.games forward slash Halloween. And you should, because there's heaps of prizes and uh, you only get a chance if you're over there in your winter. I'm hosting a stream on the PUBG Mobile official YouTube channel, Big Dogs, uh, tomorrow, October the 21st. Don't forget there will be a big finale on the same channel on October the 29th. Uh, we're going to have a absolutely mega special celebrity guest. If you think you know who that is, leave a comment below and we'll see what happens. Uh, the Ride to Survive sweepstakes is also now open and will run all the way up to the finale on the 29th of October. And you can enter that once per day. You should enter that because it will give you the opportunity to win a real life motorcycle with sidecar. One lucky winner, just like the one in game. To enter, head over to the 13 Days of Halloween event website and provide your name, email address, and player ID. Got to get all those three big ticket items. While you're on the website, you can also enter win prizes in the daily giveaways happening on the big live streams uh, all the way through to the 28th of October. Prizes include iPad minis, gift cards, a whole lot more. So stick around, get involved. Why not? It's stuff. G'day Muppets, how are you going? I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching the videos. What a beautiful bunch of humans you are. Uh, if you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor before we kick off this tactical jaunt on the arid desert sands of Miramar, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, walk the dog, eat your veggies and be nice to your mum. Now, we're going to be looking at some final circle stuff here and also some teamwork tactics, how to deal with a squad when you're in a duo. Uh, just a few little bits and pieces that I think will probably help you out and make you a better player and a better human being overall. I'm with Foxy, KR Fox, one of the patrons, and we're holding in the very, very nice spot where uh, well, we were holding in a very, very nice spot on top of a mountain before someone rotated in behind us, which is always going to happen. You're never, never sure in PUBG Mobile. Now, when you get to the final circle, and there's going to be a great little passage of play towards the end here where um, I think Foxy probably comes a comes a cropper and makes a bit of an error and then i make a bit of an error but we manage to work together to actually get out of this the guys down the bottom of this hill by the way they're just blowing so much ammo at us when there's no chance they can see us or hit us it's all render i don't i don't know why they do this but they spend so much time firing up here into the rock whatever it keeps them occupied it's like given toddlers a bloody bunny rabbit or something you know go go play with your stuff um one of the problems you have in these circles is getting greedy it can be very very tough uh to not just try and get involved in every gunfight as people roll into the circle especially when you are the absolute prima donna top dog of the circle you know this is the mayor's office we are elevated we're situated we're uh, hydrated <laughs> We're about to get liquidated if we don't. I mean, still looting here. Come on, seriously. How much stuff do I need? Lots of stuff. If they have things, I like things. If it's shiny, a bit of a magpie like that, we get involved, we have a good time. Uh, anyway, we've got to get back up on top of this mountain. Now, the guys who took us out at the start uh, of this little clip here are still rotating in from the southwest somewhere. And they're the ones that I'm really worried about because they can get up on parity with us here and actually make it into a gunfight where, so there's two of us, two of them, and the two guys down below. And this is a worry for me because we're on top, but we're also between. And these guys are pushing hard enough that we can't really cover both angles successfully and hope to be alive. So the idea here is we clear the squad from the southwest, like get rid of them and then take care of the other guys. And of course, that idea doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, this is how the game is played, right? This idea just doesn't work at all. Um, things things go awry. And we're actually pretty lucky here that this is just two duos. It, this is a squad game. Um, so we start chucking out the artillery barrage. Preemptive measures. Just trying to see if we get a lucky knock and then we can push the knock. They're doing exactly the same thing. They're very close though. And we do have the circle, but we've got two guys rotating in from behind. Now, our decision is to try and clear these guys. 
I don't know what you agree. Put in the comments below, do you think that's the wise thing to do here, to push forward and clear these dudes, or do you think we're better off actually holding an angle here and trying to force them into the kind of engagement that you know doesn't suit? Now, once I saw that that guy was on fire, that feels like an advantage to me, and I want to push it. But I completely underestimated how far back this entire side of this hill went. And as we start pushing up, you can see at that exact point in time, the other duo hits exactly behind us. And we've only knocked one guy here. And oh, there's someone behind us now. So Foxy was going low and that's kind of really screwed us. Okay, because now I've gone all the way down to clear and that's my mistake. And suddenly we've gone from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. And they now have an overlook on us. And to get out of this, we're going to kind of repeat the process that these two guys in front of us did when they turned up. Um, we're going to force these guys into thinking they have an advantage and they're going to jump down and absolutely ruin it. I've got to say, there is the old adage, we fight for hills, not holes. And you can see that this is why you fight for hills, not holes. It is a lot harder to look up and shoot than it is to just lean over the edge and you know drop a pineapple down. Particularly when you can see that the rock face is sloping away, so it's giving no real cover. We're under the overhang here, but they're gonna get angles on us. And there's not much we can do about this. Uh, I'm running car 98 and mark 14, and I'm considering changing to anything else. And that is a terrible thing to be doing. Right now, this is the worst thing I could possibly be doing. I've now got one round in an org A4 and just crazy bad, crazy bad idea. But Foxy is gonna have a brilliant moment of genius here. He gets the knock with the Graza and then he is gonna go out and just meat shield, get the hit and let me turn up and finish him off. So we played well, then we played badly, and then as a team, we got together and made it happen. Uh, very, very odd gameplay. Here's another little bit of teamwork from the same run where Foxy is gonna wait on me, the C, and then he finishes him. This is like something that I've been doing for years because I come from a game uh, called World of Tanks Blitz where you would focus fire. Focus firing is incredibly important and it's something that a lot of squads don't do. If you call out a target and the whole squad focuses on that target, you will find that you will clear that target all the time uh, compared to when you all just shoot at the random stuff. Like if someone says, uh, we're gonna try and bait the guy on the left, this is why I really used to love playing with my mate Ouija, who doesn't play anymore, sadly, because we had that kind of chemistry and we always called targets and we were so successful because of it. This is something I will never understand. I wanted to put this in here. What is your mindset when you can see we're just doing our work here. There's one guy over there and there's two of us, okay? We're getting knocks. We're working. We go forward. Foxy's going to get knocked. Now, this guy has a chance to save everyone just by killing me. Everyone there is in the game. We did not thirst a single target and he just decides to try and get the kill. That is baffling to me and it is something that happens again and again and again and again. I have no problems with people thirsting. I have a problem with people thirsting targets when they are in the middle of a gunfight and no one on their squad is dead and there is no reason that they should be thirsting that they should be trying to win the gunfight and actually continue on uh anyway so foxy's knocked up the top this is actually a really interesting passage of play uh this is very early game we hot dropped picado arena uh, we've done a little bit of looting but we don't have a lot of good stuff and there is a squad that has dropped outside of town and got awesome loot. Like they've all got great scopes, all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna smoke up, but look how far back behind the smokes I go. All I'm doing is using those smokes kind of as a, a long range, because if you think about it like this, um, when I'm back that far, the line of sight between me and the target is actually 
obscured a lot more by the smoke. It's very hard for them to get a good angle. And we're able to look all the way around and we just get here in time. There's a target up here trying to come up and thirst Foxy. And they really have extended out to get this thirst. And this is right in line with what I was talking about before. You've got one guy knocked out here and you're willing to go all the way out here to try and pick it up. Anyone in the five stacks, anyone in Picardo Arena, anyone in those kind of areas would be able to clear the guy coming up here. It is such a risk. It is such a massive risk. You can hear now the guy in the five stack is starting to punch out at these dudes. Um, and then Foxy gets that guy back up. Here comes the other one. And we get the clear. Tactical gameplay isn't just about being really, really good. It's got nothing to do with it. I am nowhere near the gunfighter that half the dudes that I play against or play with are. I'm a good sniper. Um, and when I play seriously, I make good rotations. Look at all the stuff these dudes had. Like seriously, they had so much gear. Uh, I'm going to show you one more little bit of uh, joy here. This is almost immediately after this where we start rotating out and we're like, screw the guys in the five stacks. We're just going to rotate out. Uh, we we have a little gunfight with the last members of this squad down here. You're going to see. And then a full squad pushes into us. What Foxy and I do is rather than waste our time getting crazy and, and really when we get a knock, like trying to be super aggressive, we spread. And you're going to see how patient we are with this. There's only two of us, right? There's only two people. Um, here it comes, the full squad. Great stuff. Uh, there's only two people, but we spend so much time, so much time setting up a little side ambush. Uh, you can see they're a, a decent squad. They start rolling in uh, and they spread straight away. They're sending one to the flank on the right, one to the flank on the left and holding the middle with two. That's very good gameplay, but it's something that we're expecting. It's very much derogueur right now to play like this. And I'm continually firing. I'm just kind of trying to keep these guys engaged, make them think they've got the angle. Foxy has not fired forever. Here he goes. And he has that angle. And suddenly, Things are getting desperate, and these guys panic. And now we've got a knock on both sides, and they're grinning in, but this is a very different ball game. And we're still being patient, still hitting our heels. Foxy's going right again. We're getting more angles. Okay, we're going high. This is what I love about good teamwork. Fox didn't fire there for ages, and I wasn't hitting Jack, but I was keeping everyone engaged until he got the angle. You can see pro teams do this all the time. They'll send someone to one side to flank while they hold with the other. If it doesn't work, it gets real hectic. There's the other knock. Guy's down the bottom. He was going to get the other revive. There's a hit. So he's low. That's a big donk M24 chest shot. Gotta love fun teamwork. And now, now the pressure's being applied. Now Foxy's pushing up. And that's it. <laughs> that's all she wrote. And that was a, a really fun engagement. They actually did that pretty well. They just probably didn't respect us enough as a unit. They looked like a good squad. They just probably thought they were going to roll in there and wallop us. Anyway, that's some tactical looks from Miramar. I really enjoy running Miramar, as you probably know. It's one of my favorite parts of uh, PUBG Mobile. Sniping, long-range engagements, good tactical work, wide open circles, no grass to snake in, happy days. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe to the videos. I uh, hope you're enjoying all the new editing and everything else. I'm Bushka. Look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. And until next time, bye for now.